Hello everyone, welcome back to the course on the Trivia Method, presented by me, Thomas Halifax. This is part two, and in part two, we are going to be covering logic. If you haven't already, check out, check out the introduction and grammar part that goes along preceding these parts. So, we'll be covering logic which is the decision-making processes of building our reality. That relates to our understanding. So logic is the phase of the trivium that leads to the reason and meaning of something. Logic allows the mind to answer, answer the question of why. So it deals with the plane of causality where the manifestation in the reality came from and the reasons that made it manifest. So, the essence of logic is to remove contradiction. By nature, substance cannot contradict, but the mind can. So logic trains the mind to spot and remove the contradictions. And it does this through the way of fundamental axioms, which are bases to begin an understanding and investigation from. So an axiom is an idea or premise that's assumed to be true and sets up the foundation for further logic. So the basic axioms of logic, if you're following formal logic and using that, which we will we'll be doing, a thing is itself, pretty common sense, a football isn't a basketball, and a duck isn't a chicken. Every statement is either true or false, and no statement can be both true and false. Which leads us to truth and fallacy. With given terms that we covered in grammar, Logic deals with the truthfulness of statements. Statements that can be said to be true have true premises and valid reasoning. We'll take a quick look at that. Here I've got some examples on the side. Frogs have long necks to help them reach the leaves at the top of trees. Of course that's ridiculous because we have the wrong term in the place where you would expect the correct term. Giraffes have long necks to help them reach the leaves at the top of trees. And syllogism will explore this later. So, terms are an essential component, so we'll cover defining terms. So, we've got two types of terms and two aspects of terms. So we have an undistributed term and a distributed term. And we have the substance of a term and an accident of the term. We're going to take another look at that right now. And here we, ch we actually have a uh, fallacy of the cat without a grin being a confusion of substance and accident. So let's take a look at these terms. A duck, or this duck, is undistributed and refers to a part of a group. All the ducks is distributed and refers to all the members of a group. Now substance and accident we have the substance of being a duck does not change. It is inherent to the duck. But the accident of being an adult duck or a baby duck does change, and it's not inherent to the duck. So now, in logic, as you might expect, we use a lot of reasoning. And most people are familiar with Sherlock Holmes and the the quote-unquote deductive method that Sherlock Holmes uses, but there are four different types of reasoning 
that are used in logic. So we have deduction, which it moves from a conclu from a conclusion moves a conclusion from the general to the particular. It takes a set of premises and it goes in order 1 plus 1 equals 2. Inductive reasoning, induction, moves a conclusion from a particular to a general. It's evidence collection. This is more based around the scientific method where you're noticing a particular thing like say an apple falling and then moving to a more general thing into what you know as the law of gravity. Now we have abduction, which is technically more of what Sherlock Holmes would do, is moving a conclusion from known and unknown facts to a probable conclusion, taking the highest probability of what can be known, or I think as Sherlock Holmes would say, once you've removed the impossible, whatever's left, no matter how illogical, must be the case. The next form of reasoning is analogical reasoning. An analogical reasoning is a conclusion of likeness. One thing as a less known other thing. So comparison is a big deal in analogical analogical reasoning, so that way you can find out what something is like, and this involves a lot of uh, metaphor and analogy as well. So now we have our syllogism, and this is a classical syllogism that I've listed here, and in syllogism you have a logical arrangement of statements where major and minor terms are connected by a middle term which form a sound conclusion. So here we have the syllogism, all men are mortal. Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal. There's a whole bunch of silly things that happen with syllogisms that end up making weird logics and weird reasonings based off of unconnected premises and those are all a part of logical fallacy. But the key to making the correct conclusions is in the nexus. And the nexus, like the connection to the matrix, the nexus is the link between premises and conclusion. So the example, if it drops below freezing, then frost will form. The nexus is valid, and you can follow that train of thought along to see that that does happen, and this would be an example of deductive reasoning. So if there is a face in the clouds, then it will snow. Now this nexus is flawed. There's no connection between seeing a face in the clouds and it snowing. Unless it's a cartoon. So in logic we have propositions. So a statement can fall into four general sets of conditions. So we have the value of the proposition, so something that is either true or false, like the frogs having long necks example, which would be of course false. We have the proposition's quality, so we have our affirmatives and negatives. I did brush my teeth, or I did not comb my hair. Next we have modality, is fact or obligation, like ants are small, and you should not burn them with a magnifying glass. This would be a modal proposition, where it's making a suggestion and stating a fact of something. Then we have our quantity. So we covered this example a little bit, but it's part of the propositions. We have all and some, which relates to aspects of the distributed or undistributed. All ducks quack and some ducks bite. Here we have 
statements that form arguments. So we have our predicative statement, more of a deductive form, which is S is P, whales are mammals. We have our conjunctive statement, P and Q. So for this example, lions are big and scary. Our disc disjunctive statement uses or, P or Q. The cat is alive or dead. Now our conditional statement, if then. If it rains, then we'll stay in. Now the comparative statement, this like that, tangerines are like small oranges. And those two things combined fit into this really nice little tool called the square of oppositions. And this is really handy for working out what type of argument you're interacting with and how it's being used. So that way you can kind of see where it falls. And so these are, um, let me just read this here. We got the tool of logic provides a category system for statements. The categories have four forms, universals and particulars, affirmatives and negatives. So on the left side with A and I, we have our affirmatives. And on the right side, we have E and O, which are negatives. On the top, we have universals, which includes all or none, A and E. And on the bottom are particulars, which are some and some are not. So I and O. And those are just abbreviations that are used for denoting what that particular type of argument is. Very handy tool. So the other handy tools that we have for testing arguments are these. Reductio ad absurdum is a test that begins with assuming that something is true until it reaches a point of ridiculous, ridiculousness, like assuming that the ground is solid until you're floating above it like a cartoon. Consequentia mirabilis, I believe pronounced, a test assuming something is false until a point where it's proven true. And then we have the classical tool Occam's razor that most people are familiar with to not add reasons to something when simpler explanations will do just fine. And now the final tool that I'll explain for this course on logic is dealing with dilemmas. So what to do? So you have a neither situation where a third valid option is neglected a mention. So there's a false choice. You have this, this choice here and this choice there, but the solution is that the thing in the middle solves the problem because you don't have to grab either of the two options. The next solution would be the either option, which is to diffuse one side of that those two sides, you're either or. So for the final one, we have the counter, which is to form a new dilemma out of the premises to draw an opposite conclusion, which you can do by rearranging the premises and making a different statement about the quality of the premises. And that will wrap up the segment here on logic. So thank you very much for watching. We'll have the next video covering the topic of rhetoric coming up next in this video series. Thank you so much.